In this part of the tutorial, we're going to run through lots of examples to illustrate how to test whether or not a functional series is convergent, and if so, whether or not the convergence is uniform. So we're going to use the methods that we discussed in part one of this tutorial. First, we're going to look at some series which are not convergent. In this example, notice that our domain goes from 0 to 1 and includes the endpoints 0 and 1. Now, often in these examples, the very first thing you should consider is whether there's a particular value of x which actually causes the series to diverge. And in this example, you'll notice that if x equals 1, then since 1 to the power j is always equal to 1, each term in the series is equal to 1 over 1 plus 1, which is a half. So if x equals 1, our series just goes half plus half plus half, etc. And obviously, since we have infinitely many terms, the total is actually infinite. And therefore, it's impossible for us to define a real valued limit function, which our series converges to when x equals 1. And so our functional series is not pointwise or uniformly convergent. Another typical example is where you have something trigonometric. So in this case, the terms in our series are given by cos x to the power j over j, where x is strictly between minus pi and pi. Now in this case, the fact that the terms have a denominator of j suggests that there's going to be something going on here which involves the harmonic series. And in fact, if you think of when cos of x is equal to 1, that happens when x equals 0. So when x equals 0, then our series is just the harmonic series. We know that's divergent, so we don't have any kind of convergence here either. Now in our third example, we have a series which looks quite similar to the very first example we looked at, except this time we have a 1 in the numerator instead of x to the power j. And also, importantly, the domain is the open interval from 0 to 1, so it doesn't include 1. So we can't do the trick we did in the very first example and just say that when x equals 1, all of the terms in the series are equal to a half. But what we can do is recall an important fact, and this is sometimes called the zero test for divergence of a series. The zero test says that a series can only be convergent if its terms converge to zero. So that means if we have a series where the terms don't converge to zero, then the series must be divergent. And in this case, if we check what the limit of 1 over x to the j plus 1 is, as j tends to infinity, we can apply the algebra of limits and use the fact that since x is strictly between 0 and 1, that means x to the j must tend to 0. And that means 1 over x to the j plus 1 will tend to 1, which is not equal to 0. So we can actually take any value of x between 0 and 1 and say that the terms in the series don't tend to 0, and therefore the series must be divergent. Now we're going to look at some examples of series which do converge, but not necessarily in a uniform sense. So first of all, let's consider this series, where the domain is the closed interval from minus 1 to 1. First of all, if x equals 0, then every term in the series is 0. And similarly, if x equals 1 or minus 1, then 1 minus x squared is 0. And so again, every term in the series is 0. However, if x takes any other value between minus 1 and 1, so we're assuming x is not equal to 0, 1 or minus 1, 1 minus x squared will be strictly between 0 and 1. And that means if we take the x squared outside the sum and use the formula for a geometric series of numbers, we actually find that the series converges to 1. So just to make that clear, this is a geometric series of numbers if x is strictly between minus 1 and 1. So this means that our series does converge to a limit function. And this is our pointwise limit function. If x is equal to 0, minus 1 or 1, then the series converges to 0, so the limit function is equal to 0 at those points. And for any other x values, the series converges to 1, so the limit function is 1 at those points. However, this limit function is obviously not continuous. It has points of discontinuity at 0, 1 and minus 1, and we saw when we were talking about functional sequences that if the pointwise limit function is not continuous and the terms in the sequence are continuous, then the convergence cannot be uniform. And that's a theoretical result which holds for functional series as well. So since the pointwise limit function is not continuous, we can say that the convergence is not uniform. 
Here's another example. This time we have something trigonometric, but in fact it's similar to the previous example. Here our domain is the open interval from 0 to pi. So the first thing to point out is that if x is strictly between 0 and pi, then sine x cannot be equal to 0. So sine x is always going to be positive in this interval. However, if x equals pi over 2, then cos x takes a value of 0. So in that case the series sums to 0. On the other hand, if x takes any other value strictly between 0 and pi, then we can say that sine x squared will be strictly between 0 and 1, and therefore we can use the geometric series formula again and show that the series actually converges to cos x squared over 1 minus sine x squared, which is equal to 1. So here we're using the geometric series formula, and here we're using the fact that 1 minus sine x squared is cos x squared. And therefore, as in the previous example, we have a pointwise limit function which is not continuous. The limit is equal to 0 if x equals pi over 2, and 1 otherwise. So we obviously have a point of discontinuity at pi over 2, and therefore since the pointwise limit function is not continuous, and the terms in the series are continuous, the convergence cannot be uniform. Now we're going to look at some examples where we can apply the Weierstrass m-test. And of course the m-test involves comparing the functional series to a series of numbers which is known to be convergent. So when you're looking to use the m-test, you should be looking out for a comparison you can make to a series of numbers which is known to be convergent. In this example, notice that the domain is the closed interval from 0 to 1, and therefore we can actually say that each term in our functional series is bounded above by 1 over j squared. So this inequality holds because x squared has to be less than or equal to 1 if x is between 0 and 1, and this inequality holds because if x is non-negative, then x cubed is also non-negative, so we've removed a non-negative term from the denominator. And since we know that the series 1 over j squared is a convergent series of numbers, by the Weierstrass m-test, we can say that our functional series is uniformly convergent, and of course that means it's also pointwise convergent. Here's another example. This time our domain is the open interval from minus a half to a half. The first step here is to notice that half plus x times half minus x is the same as a quarter minus x squared. So we can rewrite the terms in the series as a quarter minus x squared to the power j. And the supremum over all values of x in our domain obviously occurs when x equals 0, in which case we have a quarter to the power j. So since the series quarter to the power j is a geometric series, and therefore convergent because we have a common ratio which is smaller than 1 in absolute value, we can use the Weierstrass m-test to say that our functional series is uniformly convergent. In this next example, once again, our domain is the open interval from minus half to half, and this time we're given a hint which says that the limit of j plus 1 to the power 1 over j, as j tends to infinity, is equal to 1, and this gives us a clue as to which method we should use. If you think about convergence tests for series of numbers, there is a test which involves raising the terms in the series to the power 1 over j, and that is the root test. So in this case, first of all we notice that obviously if we want to make the modulus of j plus 1 times x to the power j as large as possible, in other words find the Chebyshev norm of j plus 1 times x to the power j, we would do that by making x as large as possible in absolute value. And it follows that the supremum is given by j plus 1 times half to the power j, since x has to be strictly between minus half and half. So j plus 1 times half to the power j isn't a maximum, but it is the supremum. And if we raise that to the power 1 over j, and take the limit as j tends to infinity, we get a half. Because this limit here is equal to 1, using the hint that we've been given, and this limit is just the limit of a constant, so it's a half. So since a half is smaller than 1, we can use the root test to say that the series of numbers with terms given by j plus 1 times half to the power j must be convergent, and therefore using the Weierstrass m-test again, our functional series must be uniformly and pointwise convergent. 
One more example to look at. In this case, our domain is the interval from zero to infinity, including zero. In order to use the Weierstrass M test, we need to find the supremum for each function in our series, fj. So that's the first thing we're going to do in this example, and we're going to do that by finding the supremum of x over 1 plus x squared, because obviously, given that x over 1 plus x squared must be non-negative, because we're only looking at non-negative values of x, any value of x which maximizes x over 1 plus x squared must also maximize x over 1 plus x squared to the power j. So let's start by looking at the endpoints of the domain. When x equals 0, x over 1 plus x squared is 0, and as x tends to infinity, you can use algebra of limits to check that the function x over 1 plus x squared tends to 0. Next, we look for stationary points of the function by using differentiation, and it turns out that the derivative of x over 1 plus x squared is 1 minus x squared over 1 plus x squared squared, which you can confirm by using the quotient rule, and that's equal to 0 when x equals 1. Obviously, we ignore the case where x equals minus 1, because minus 1 is not in our domain. And when x equals 1, x over 1 plus x squared is a half. And given that a half is greater than 0, and 0 is the value we found at the endpoints of the domain, that means the supremum of x over 1 plus x squared to the power j is a half to the power j, which is attained when x equals 1. And then the rest is straightforward. We know that the series half to the power j is a convergent geometric series, and therefore our functional series converges uniformly using the Weierstrass M test. So let's just summarize what we've talked about in this tutorial. When you're testing for convergence or divergence of a functional series, some important questions to consider are, is there a value of x anywhere in the domain which causes the series to diverge? Failing that, if the pointwise limit function exists, we can look for a point of discontinuity. And if the limit function is discontinuous at any point, and the terms in the series are continuous, then we know the convergence can't be uniform. And if the convergence is uniform, we can show that it's uniform by comparing the series to a convergent series of numbers. And that's the essence of the Weierstrass M test. So not all examples can be solved using the techniques that we've listed here, but these are just a few of the shortcuts that you can try to look out for. Thanks for watching this tutorial. Goodbye for now.